Morning guys, I'm gonna go over the first study guide for the first test for physics. And this is gonna be mostly uh, problems on graphs. There might be an occasion where you had to use the kinematics equations. The most confusing thing in the way I constructed a study guide was to point this out was that uh, just looking at a graph and not looking at what the axes say, we can't tell whether this is a velocity time or a position time. So if we look at the third one, this is a displacement time, which looks almost the same as the velocity time. So the most important thing is you look at the axis and what kind of graph do we actually have? All right, so first question, what is the object's velocity if it is at rest? An object at rest has a velocity of zero meters per second. In this graph, where does that occur? That occurs when we're on this line, the velocity is zero line. So this is gonna happen at zero seconds, 30 seconds, and 55 seconds. And as you see, the answers are included on the study guide, but I really want you to be able to get them and then check yourself. All right, how do I find distance from a velocity time graph? From a velocity time graph, my distance is gonna be the absolute value of my areas. If I just take my areas, I'm gonna get my displacement. But if I just take the positive values, I'm gonna get distance. The difference between distance and displacement, displacement takes into account the direction and it only matters where you start and where you end, as opposed to distance, which is how far you travel. All right, so what is the object's displacement for the entire graph? So I'm gonna take into account the positives and the negatives and add them together. If this is a position time graph, the displacement would be zero because they end up exactly where they are. But that's not the case here. So in this one, I need to see what my areas are. And I'm going to have three positive areas where I have a positive velocity. So I'm going to be going forward or up or to the right. And I'm going to have one two negative areas where I'm traveling backwards or down or to the left. So these represent negative velocities down there. All right, so I'm gonna do uh, base times height divided by two plus base times height plus base times height divided by two to get my positive displacements. So this looks like my base is 10 seconds, my height is 60 meters per second, my little rectangle in here has a base of 5 and a height of 60, and my last one looks like it has a base that goes from 15 to 30. So a base of 15 seconds, a height of 60, and that's also divided by 2. So I'm going to add those up. I'd encourage you to do the same. The more you practice with your calculator doing these things, uh, the more likely you are to get the correct answer on the test. So I got 1050 positive, but that's not the answer. That's the farthest I'm going to get away from the starting point. But then this red part here, I have backward ones. So I'm going to look at those, and I'm going to get those areas. And so I'm going to have base times height divided by 2 plus base times height divided by 2. So the first one has a base of 10 seconds a height of negative 40. The 
The second one has a base of 15 seconds and a height of negative 40. And I'm going to add those up in my calculator. and I got negative 500. So if I add these together, I'm gonna have positive 1050 minus 500 is gonna give me 550, which is what the key says as well. Number nine says, what's the total distance? So the distance is just how far. So I'm going to take the absolute value of this negative distance, which is going to make it positive, and that's going to give me 1550. So we can get either one from a distance time graph. All right, displacement time graph. What does being at rest represent on a position time graph? It is a horizontal line. At what times is the object at rest? The object would be at rest there. And possibly here. I can't tell if the line goes on, but I'm just going to say there. So I'm just going to say 10 to 20. Now it passes through being at rest at that point because it's going backwards and then it starts heading back up. But I wouldn't say it's at rest, it's passing through. Kind of like if you threw something up in the air, there's a moment where the object, when it's at its height, when it changes direction, passes through velocity being equal to zero. When I think about something at rest, like it's there for an amount of time. Is that all the answers for that one? No. All right, what does an acceleration look like on a position time graph? This is going to be a curve. And you guys are going to have to draw this in the, the last part on the test. So there's a part where you draw acceleration. So that's going to be similar to what you guys did with the parachuter. I'm still drinking my morning coffee at 637 right now. Uh, what is... The object's acceleration at five seconds. I don't have any curves on here, so I'm going to say it's zero. Right? If I look at five seconds, it has a velocity, but it's constant. It's a straight line. How do I find velocity from a distance time graph? That's going to be my slope. What's the object velocity at five seconds? Okay, so I either need to look at this triangle like you guys do in math class, which would be traveling 200 meters in 10 seconds. So that would be 200 meters over 10 seconds, which would be 20 meters per second. Or you could do the slope formula, which I'll put on the board for you guys for Wednesday. Then I need two points. Uh, this one starts at 0, 0. It ends at 10, 200. So I'm going to do 200 minus 0 and 10 minus 0, and I get the same answer. Just is like just quite off, right? All right, what is the displacement for the entire graph? What is the distance? So uh, this is where it starts. It starts at zero, it goes away, it rests, it goes back to zero, it goes backwards, and it goes back to zero. So the displacement would be zero. The distance, I have to add up all of these distances. So the first one, it goes from 0 to 200. So it goes 200 meters. Then it rests. 
that's zero. Then it goes back to the origin, which would be 200. Then it goes 100 backwards, which would be 100. And then it goes back to where it started, which would be another 100. So it looks like it's 600 meters. All right, at one time is the object moving backwards. Uh, backwards on this graph is going to be negative slopes. So whether it's backwards, left, or down, that's going to be a negative slope. And so this big long line here is a negative slope. So it looks like from 20 seconds to 45 seconds would be a negative slope. Acceleration time graphs. All right, so we saw these on the parachuter too, and they don't show up a lot, but they're just going to be horizontal lines. And we're going to say that something goes from one acceleration to another acceleration really fast. So you don't have to uh, draw a line in between. You can if you want, but like if I let go of this, it's going to go from having an acceleration of zero to negative 10 at the speed of light which is ridiculously fast. So we kind of just jump around. So this one stays at one for two seconds. I know it's hard to read the PDF. And then it stays at zero from, it's hard to even read for me. Looks like that's six, eight, 10. So this is zero, two, four, six, eight, 10. Well, and then it's at negative one for two seconds. All right, so I want to find the velocity at two seconds. So I'm going to make a chart, and I'm going to assume that it's at rest because they don't tell me otherwise. And I know my acceleration from the graph is that horizontal line at one meters per second per second, and I know that my time is two seconds. So looking at the simplest of my equations, the V equals V naught plus AT, I end up with zero plus one times two. And so it looks like it ends up at two meters per second at two seconds. So Pretty straightforward. If the object begins at x equals 0 and t equals 0, where will it be at time t equals 2 seconds? So again, I'm going to look at this equation where my v naught t is going to go away. And so I have 1 half times a, which is 1, times 2 squared, which is going to be 2 times 2 is 4, divided by 2 is 2 meters. So it's going to be at 2 meters. All right, so uh, it accelerates for 2 seconds, and then it doesn't. But it's still moving. Even though it has zero acceleration, it still has that 2 meters per second velocity. So at 4 seconds, it's still going to be going at 2 meters per second. And then where will it be at four seconds? Okay, so in the first one, I went two meters. If I made a chart for two seconds to four seconds, I would have an initial velocity of two, a final velocity of two, an acceleration of zero, and a time of two. So I don't put four in here because the time is the increment. This is from two to four seconds. That's a two second increment. So two goes in here, and now I can look at my equation, and now the v naught t doesn't cancel out, but the 1 half a t squared does. And so we have 2 meters per second times 2 seconds is 4 meters, and that's our answer. No, it's not, because this is how far we go from 2 to 4 seconds. I still got to add this guy up.
because it's asking us where will it be at four seconds. Well, it started at the origin, it went two meters, now it's going four meters more, it's going to be at six meters. Jeez, this is hard to see. All right, so hopefully your copy looks a little better. I have a position time graph. I have a velocity time graph. All right, so average velocity, average velocity is the distance over time. So total distance over time. So for five seconds, uh, I start at two, I don't start at zero. It goes up to six and it stays at six. So from two to six would be four meters and we're saying it's five seconds. So I put that in a calculator that's 0.8 meters per second. From five to seven seconds, I should have said this, should have said displacement here. Sorry. So my average velocity for five to seven at five seconds, I'm located at six. At seven seconds, I'm located at zero. So my displacement would be negative six meters and it took me two seconds. So this is negative three meters per second. All right, so the other thing I can get from a velocity time graph is I can get what the acceleration is. So the acceleration is gonna be the slope, the distance is gonna be the area. And if you think about the unit analysis, like what the units are, it makes sense because if I take velocity, which is meters per second, divided by time, which is second, I get meters per second per second, which is meters per second squared, and that's the unit of acceleration. All right, so from zero to three seconds, that's a horizontal line. The slope of a horizontal line is zero. From three to five seconds. So again, you guys can make a triangle, and your triangle is gonna go over two and up 20. So it would be 20 meters per second over two seconds or 10 meters per second squared. I would use the formula for a slope because that's what I learned when I was a little boy. And so my two ordered pairs would be three comma 30 and five comma 50. And so I would take 50 minus 30 meters per second divided by 5 minus 3 seconds. And that gives me 10 meters per second. And then from 5 to 15 seconds, I have this big triangle here. So you guys would have uh, a triangle that would have a change in height of negative 50 meters per second. So it goes from 50 down to zero, that'd be a change of negative 50. And then that would be divided by 10. And so I have negative five meters per second per second. I would look at my ordered pairs to do it my way. And so I would say I have five comma 50, and I would say I have 15 comma zero. And so I would have uh, zero minus 50 for my Y2 minus Y1, and I would have 15 minus five. And I got negative five as well. All right, and the last part is we're doing uh, distances. So distances on a velocity time graph are gonna be the absolute value of our areas. This isn't gonna matter for this one because 
we don't have any negative velocities. Our velocities are between zero and 50. So all of our distances will agree with our displacements. So zero to three seconds is gonna be, maybe I'll change colors. So zero to three seconds is gonna be this rectangle. Uh, this rectangle would have a base of three seconds and a height of 30 meters per second. And so that would be 90 meters. From three to five seconds, I'm going to have, and I'll change colors again, a rectangle here and a triangle there. So my rectangle, the green base times height, is going to be two seconds times 30 meters per second plus one half two seconds times 20 meters per second. So what I want is everything that's under that line down to zero. And if it was negative, I'd want everything above that line to zero. All right, so this is going to be 60 meters, and this is going to be 20 meters, and so I have 80 meters. Why does my key say 90? Hmm. Oh, because that's the one before it. I look at the wrong thing. Okay, so it's 80. All right, and then from 5 to 10 seconds. All right, so 5 to 10 seconds. I'll change the color again. Maybe I'll erase a little bit to give myself a little bit more room. Go back to blue. So five to 10 seconds, I would make this a rectangle, and I would make this a triangle. And it depends on where you say that rectangle is. So. It looks to me at 10 seconds like I'm a little bit below 30, but I don't know exactly what it is. I don't know if, is it closer to 25? I'm going to erase these and kind of take a look for myself. So there are the dots going down. So this is 10 seconds here. If I line this up, maybe it's 25. I'm going to use 25, but I mean, it'll be very clear on the test. I know that this is, this is a graph I made on Excel. So that's how old the graph is. So I'm going to say that that is 25. And so I'm going to have a rectangle that goes 5 seconds and goes up 25 meters per second. And then I'll have another triangle. And that's going to also be 5 seconds going up an additional 25. And then I divided that by 2. And I feel like on the key, like someone changed the, the distance. And I got 187.5. Maybe it's clear if you look at the actual paper, like where it goes to. All right, guys, uh, that is the end. You'll have a couple days before the test. Please 
go over and feel comfortable with both what you can get from graphs, how do I calculate slopes, how do I calculate areas, and how do I use those kinematics equations, those three equations.